Hey, you. Shut up. (laughs) Hey, you. Have you ever wanted to challenge yourself? Have you ever wanted to go to Juilliard? Have you ever wanted to be the world's best musician? You're so cute. Well, I can actually help you out there. The trick, the the thing is, getting into Juilliard is very simple. Yeah, I said it. Getting into Juilliard is very simple. However, don't get simple and easy mixed up. Simple means that there are some simple steps that you can take to increase your chances of success. Although Juilliard has around a 7% acceptance rate, it is very, very possible to increase your chances of getting accepted if you follow a couple of really simple, easy to follow steps. The first thing is visit Juilliard. It's very important to go to the school and actually get acclimated with the environment. Make sure you meet up with a teacher that you want to study with and get a lesson with them. This is one of the most, this wind is crazy. (laughs) One of the most underestimated but most powerful tools that you can have in your arsenal is to get FaceTime with a teacher. Learn how you work with each other because that that could be the determining factor when it comes to the acceptance of a student. So make sure you go and get a lesson with a teacher at some point in time. The next thing is get to know your music better because in the audition a teacher may ask you why you made a certain musical nuance or decision. And it's important to know your music really well so that you can actually give a very concrete reason for why you did that. Make sure you have this sort of information because anything goes once you get in the audition room and you want to be prepared. The next thing is to know where the important parts of your music are. The judges have really, really limited time, so it's very important to know certain spots of the music they are definitely going to listen to. A great example of this is in the Walton Viola Concerto. After the really fast 16th note section, there's a double stop six section. They are very likely going to listen to that because it's a very important piece of the, of the music. They will not hear everything, but it's important to have everything ready. Expanding on the last idea, don't freak out when they ask you to do something different. For instance, you may play a section all legato, and then they may ask you, can you play that more off the string? It doesn't mean you played it wrong, and I know it's really scary in the moment. What's really important is that you realize that they may be asking you to see if you're versatile, to see if you're teachable, to see if you do more than one style. And that's really important, being able to change on the spot. So just be ready for that. And if it does happen, don't freak out, calm down, it's okay. Another thing that I've heard in some auditions, they actually ask you what you would like to start with. And this is super important because you want to start off on the best. You want to put your best foot forward and you really want to blow their socks off from the first minute. So I wouldn't say pick your very best piece, but pick something that is so strong that you have cold that you could play in your sleep and bring it to the table and wow them from the beginning. Once you have them captivated, then it's your time to shine. So go for it. Is make sure you make a bomb ass pre-screening tape. A lot of schools ask for a pre-screening tape so that they can weed out, you know, people who've been playing for like three days <laughs> and say, hey, I want to go to Juilliard. <laughs> so it's, it's important to make sure that your pre-screening is of a high caliber of playing that really represents you. But don't worry about spending $500, $600 on awesome editing and video. You don't really need that. You just need to make sure that you are on your A game and your face is clear and the audio is sticking. And the last thing I can say is you gotta practice. It's it's the most important aspect of your musical development is going into a room by yourself, preferably with a mirror and a metronome, and listen to yourself. Listen to how you sound. I know it's discouraging, but listen to yourself and work on making yourself sound better. Doing that day in and day out will hands down make you so much more comfortable when you put get put in a high pressure situation. All of these tips can really, really help you, but there's no substitute for hard, hard work. If you really work hard, and if you really, really, if you have a passion for this, if you are teachable, you have such a great chance of making it into one of the finest performing arts schools on the planet. Even if other people don't believe you can do it, it doesn't matter, you're not, they're not living your life. The only person who has to believe in you is you. And so if you put all these steps together and if you practice your booty off, I really believe that you can have a positive result. Hey guys, I'll be honest with you, I didn't think I could ever get in the Julia. I graduated high school with low self-esteem in my amount of in my ability to play and for good reason, because I was not good. <laughs> and I really decided that I wanted to work for it. So in my undergrad, I went to the Robert McDuffie Center for Strings in Macon, Georgia. Shout out to Robert McDuffie. Thank you. You really changed my life. 
my teacher at the Robert McDuffie Center for Strings was a former student at Juilliard. So I would talk to her constantly about what I needed to do. And that's where a lot of these tips come from. Things that she told me and things that I actually did in my audition to get into grad school there. Among those, I flew up before my audition. I flew up a few days before my audition. I had a lesson with the teacher that I wanted to study with. The number one teacher. I made sure that even years prior to that, I had master classes with a couple of the other teachers that taught at Juilliard. And I really, really found that just staying in the picture helped so much. So it's all about not only the hard work, but it's also about being present and showing people that you really, that this matters to you. Coming from a guy who was told time and time again that he never had a future in classical music, I can tell you firsthand that it's possible. You just gotta want it enough, and you just have to put in a little work. But if you do that, you're unstoppable. Thank you, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions in particular, feel free to ask me. I read all the comments and answer as many as humanly possible. Also, I post videos every single Sunday. And if you want to see the previous video, it's right here.